AccuQuilters. Today's show is all about how to cut and organize your pieces for this AccuQuilt along. That's right, so stay tuned, see what we're up to today. There we go. I'm Pam Heller, AccuQuilts Cutting Expert. And I'm Erica Botker, AccuQuilts Creativity Expert. All right, Erica, it's this time. is the last one of the year. And, and the one I'm probably the most excited about. It is part one of the 2023 AQS AccuQuilts Along series. We're gonna be making the Go Dart Around the Glorified Nine Patch Throw Quilt today. And today we're gonna to show you how to cut and organize your pieces. So we have a sample back there. Yes. And then here's a sample as well. Yes, that you made. I did, I made this for the Oakley Bug. Yes. When this die was first released, yes. I was super excited. Made, used a little grunge, did a um, flange binding. Yes. And then look. I love the back. I love yep. how you used all of your fabrics, yep. your extra fabric, yep. and created the back. And I made one before the die even launched for my granddaughter. But <laughs> we have to I, be real careful about those. <laughs> yeah, we do. We can't post pictures when we do that. So it was super fun. And as you know, it's one of my favorite dies. It is. All Plus, right. Today we're going to show you how to cut and organize your pieces, right? Right. right. Okay. And don't worry, we're gonna have live question and answer all throughout the show with AccuQuilt production coordinator, Mr. Brock Workman as our on-site moderator. Yay! Hello, Brock. He's not on camera Yay. today. He's, he's not on camera, he's doing all of the, the things. voice behind the curtain. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they said uh, I was just way too good looking to continue it's being true. on camera it was last week. And they need, to, they need to tone it down. I need yeah. to pick my spots. We just need to to not do that, so. All right, and don't forget, we're gonna have um, question and answers. If you have any questions, right. put them in the comments yep. section, and yep. then Brock will read them back to us. We need more words, Brock. And then Brock will relay them to us. Right. All right, now quilters, in case you missed it, the introduction for this Quilt Along series was back on September 20th show. And we went over the dye, the project, we talked about different color variations and fabrics, mm -hmm. and how to use Go Quilt, which is our free design tool on our website, right. as a tool to kind of imagine those different fabrics and how it would look. So if you missed that show, it is recorded. You can find it on our Facebook page, our website, and our YouTube channel. That's right. Now, it's really important to watch, it's beneficial to watch that show mm -hmm. before you start the Go Dart Around the Glorified Nine Patch Throw Quilt. So again, check it out on our social media page. That's right. Now this, as I said before, is absolutely one of my favorite <laughs> dies. It is a classic, classic block, and it has gentle curves. Gentle curves. They're so not hard curves to sew at all. Yep. Don't fear the curves. Now, here's a sample of one of my blocks, because I jumped the gun a little bit and got started. I'll hold it up for Greg over here. Uh, yes, but you have to tell him the truth, though. Okay, so the truth is that I actually started <laughs> making this quilt low quite some time ago. We yes. won't be specific, but I, last fall, I went around collecting fabrics to make more blocks for this that I had already started, and they've all been sitting here and waiting for But you had a theme. I had a theme. I wanted to do since the moment that I saw, well, since the moment I started um, nagging Lynn Gibney yeah. to come out with this die, I've wanted to make it in 30s reproduction fabric, so that's what I'm going to be doing. Yep. Yep. So it's going to knock a UFO off of my list. It's always a good thing. Pretty excited about so that. So tell us about your fabrics, Ms. Oh, Pam. gosh. So Corey Yoder is one of our favorite designers, and she created this absolutely fabulous line uh. called Buttercup and Slate, and it's from Moto Who Makes Grunge. <laughs> and since the... Um, pattern uses a variety of colors for the block. I actually had these half yard cuts in my stash and I thought, oh, these are perfect. Because Erica, the, the pattern says you only have to make nine blocks. Right. But I'm gonna make more blocks so that it's bigger. 
I and these half yard cuts are perfect for that. Yes. So uh, right now is really a good time quilters to like look in your stash, look and see what fabrics you have. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to make it scrappy, but it's a great time to kind of check it out. I'm going to be scrappy, but seriously, she's been sitting on this fabric for months waiting for like, the perfect way to use it. See, I use mine and made placemats, but you've been sitting on yours waiting for just the right we moment. When was the shop hop? I went to the shop hop back in the spring, right? Yeah. I drug Ray and we went to the <laughs> Nebraska shop hop. And so, and fun fact, yes. I won um, a gift card from Celtic Quilter on that shop hop. Oh, and there you go. somewhere else I got a gift card as well. Yes, I'm trying to remember the name of the store. It was in... It's in Louisville. Town, Louisville, Nebraska. Yeah, and they had it, and I bought half yard cuts of it. It was fabulous. There we go. All right. All right. Now, like we mentioned earlier, quilters, Brock is here to answer, to ask any of your questions that you may have for us to answer. So do we have anything yet, Brock? Brock, do we have any questions? We have one request and a question. Okay. okay. We'll begin with the request because it was the most recent thing you talked about, which is fabric selection. Yes. Debbie was wondering if you could cover any tips that you have in choosing fabric colors for this project. Oh, I would love yes. to. So let me talk, that's a great question. And let me talk about mine. Okay. Um, and then you can talk about yours. I will. Because I think it was great. Okay, so this is, I had these six half yard cuts. And so what I wanted to make sure Shapes A and C are the same color, right? So A right. and C. So, oh, see, I knew I did this backwards. Here, hold, please. Um, what I wanted to do, no, I did it right. Okay. You did it right. So what I wanted to do was make sure that none of my A's and C's were the same. And see, this is, this. hold, please. I messed this up because I was putting stickers on it. Whoa, our table is Our moving. table keeps moving. <laughs> it's okay. Sorry, we're leaning. Okay. okay, so I wanna make sure that A, there we go, this is right. Okay, I wanna make sure that the A's are all different mm -hmm. and then the C's are all different. Okay. So I kind of manipulated, but you wanna have some contrast. Right, right. right. So okay. here's, here's what I, to me, these are smaller pieces, so I think a smaller print works really well. Pam's got a smaller print. I've got smaller prints on here. Mm -hmm. um, mine is going to be scrappy, but again, I've got kind of that overarching theme of it being the 30s reproduction fabrics. So when i taking mine, I kind of went two by two, if you will. So I thought, okay, these two go well together. Oh, I like those together. And then maybe I'll do these two together. Right, so there's some contrast. Right, then I had this one, which I just thought was so cute with little Scotty dogs, but I needed something blue, so I dug around and found this one. Oh, there you go. So I'm oh, kind I love of the doing ladybugs. my- I found the ladybugs. I got a big piece of it, it's so cute. I haven't decided what to put with it. I think the it. ladybugs and the Would they Scotties go with the Scotties? I think so. Okay. And then I would put these two together. Those two together, okay. All right, let we'll me do help that. you fix your fabric. Yes. <laughs> okay. Then I had this that has little puppy dogs on it, which is super Cute. sweet. And I didn't know if it went with, does yeah. it really go with purple? But it kind of does. But it kind of does. It kind of goes. So I'm just kind of working with mine. And then as we go and we talk about organizing, um, we'll talk about how that works. But one of the things that you can do if you're suffering, or you're, you're having some issues, I'm gonna see if I've got it on here, is that on the selvage okay. edge of your fabric, and I it's cut off of this one, let's see. Let's see if it's on this one. You'll have what I call registration marks. Here we go. Oh, there you go. So let me get my fabric out of the way. So if you're having a hard time envisioning and with your colors, one tip is to look on your selvage edge at these little registration marks. These are gonna represent all the shades and colors that are in the fabric. So if you matched these, you know you're probably gonna be good. Now, a lot of times in a pattern, I'm gonna look for medium, dark, and light shades. Yes. With this, really, my background is my light. 
Right. And most of my colors are gonna be medium to dark. Yep. So it's a little different. If you're struggling with medium, light, dark tones, take a picture of the fabric, turn it to black on your phone, turn it to black and white, and then look at it because it's Very. gonna be easier to see that tone in the black and white than right. otherwise. Right, and if you're looking like I did with a fabric collection of right. runner's cup and slate, then you it's it's a little bit easier because they're you know kind of gonna go they're gonna kind of go together. But that was a really great question. It is. And also with Go Quilt, you can take a photograph of it, upload it into yes. Go Quilt, and create the project with the colors from mm -hmm. your from your um, stash. And there's a quick one minute tutorial or two minutes on how right. to do that. Okay, so that was a good question. Do we have another question request? Uh, yes, Linda wanted to know before she did it, uh, will starching your fabric cause problems with the go big cutter? No. No. None. No. Nope. None nope. problems. I, I know a lot of people who starch their fabric. Yes. Um, especially if they have curves. Right. I starch because it smells good. <laughs> I don't usually <laughs> starch my fabric. You know, I when don't When I iron either. fabric, I never use steam. I never use steam unless I've got a real mess going on. <laughs> Um, if I've got a real wrinkled mess of fabric, oh, I will okay. do it only okay. before I get started, but I won't do it while I'm piecing. Okay. Um, but starch can be really helpful. So if you're working with scraps and they've just been balled up or, or some old stash and, or whatever, and you've got some you really got bad mess. creases, you got a, you got a mess going on, then, then steam and starch may be your best friends. But as a general rule, I'm kind of lazy. And so if I can skip that step, yeah. I do. Yeah, and I find sometimes it distorts the fabric. Yeah, so. now if it's a real loosely woven fabric, um, like an older fabric maybe, or a looser weave, then it's more important to do that to get a good clean cut. Okay, all right, do, do we have more questions before we move on, Mr. Brock? You may move on. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's look at this die, quilters. All right, it is on a six by 24 die board, so it's gonna fit through all of our cutters, including the Go Me. I'm gonna move it here to the middle. Okay, that's fine. All right, so shapes A and C are the same color. B is the contrasting color. And D is our melon shape. Ironically, both Eric and I are using D as our background, okay? And we're using the same white fabric. Right, <laughs> yeah. Our background. The so. same white, okay. And so I picked up hers and said, this is mine, right? And she said, no, it's not, it's mine. She's gonna cut it and everything. I was gonna, this is mine. I haven't subcut mine yet. All right, so I'm gonna show you and then how we determine how to subcut. You can follow the pattern instructions. Right. It's gonna tell you. But what we wanna do is measure from here to here. And so from here to here, sorry, Erica, right. is two and three quarter inches. We're just gonna add a quarter of an inch on either side. Yes. So I have already rough cut with the fabric strip that is three and a quarter inches. Because what we want it to do is just barely cover that shape. Right, right. And if we do with the fabric, we know this is the salvage edge, this is parallel to our blades. Right. Okay? And then I moved to shape B and did the exact same thing, cut with the fabric strips. Now keep in mind, in your block, you're only gonna need one shape A and four of shape B. So right. do a little math. So you may be able to cut your A and then cut your B's out of the same strip. Nope, this is, these are different. This is a different width than this? These are different colors. Oh, those are different colors, that's right. If I can because I'm scrapping. Yes, she is scrapping Pam and- Pam can't and, and, because she's, right. she's being planned. So do a little math and figure out how many blocks that you need right. of each one um, before you cut I don't know, 400 of these yes, right, before right. you need it, okay? Now, this one, I did the same thing, and you're gonna measure from here to here. Never mind me. And we're just gonna do four and a half inch with the fabric strip. Now, we're gonna show you, typically, Eric and I, um, you can fan fold this, but I think Eric is gonna show you a little trick on I how am. to cut and then we're gonna shift it. Mm -hmm. um, so this little tail is gonna hang over a little bit yes. and I'll do it as well. And then I measured from here to here at a quarter of an inch and just rough cut with the fabric strips. Shape D for me is the pieces that are on every single block. 
Yes. So if I was having 30 blocks, I would need 120 of Shape D. Look at her doing math uh, in her head. On a Tuesday. Oh, it's I'm a Wednesday. So okay. And then look at this. <laughs> Whatever day. Right we here, do. we have notches. Yes. And we have notches here and here. And this is how you're going to know next week when we start sewing them together that your pieces are correct that's because right. the notches will line up. And that's one of the things I think that is so great about doing this with the die. So if you are not, if you do not have a go cutter or you do not have this die, we still want you to be able to participate. So we want you to go back to that introduction blog on September 20th and that's when you can find the downloadable templates and some traditional cutting directions from our friends at AQS right. so that you can still participate. But if there was ever a die to want to get, a, to get started with, this one is it. And fun fact, we're going to give you a spoiler alert. Our Go Me is currently on sale on the That's website. Right. That's right. And Eric and I did a little sleuthing. And if you got the Go Me, which comes with a half square triangle and quarter square triangle, right. three inch finished, um, and a mat. And if you got the uh, glorified nine patch die, which is also on sale and a mat, less than $300. So if you haven't got a Go Cutter, this is perfect because you can get that Go Me and get started. That's right. Okay, so I'm gonna do what we call fan folding and then Erica's gonna subcut her fabric. So right. what I wanna do is I'm gonna come right here. I can feel those blades underneath. I can cut up to six layers of cotton fabric. Notice quilters, I'm not going like this. No, no. No, no, we're just not wasting that fabric. Okay, this is Moda Buttercup and Slate. I don't wanna waste any of it, okay? All right, so I'm gonna do six layers here and do you want to um, start cutting yours. Well, I'm and gonna then... move this over and I'm gonna go ahead and show cutting while you're laying that out. Okay. I'm gonna show laying out and do the stack and flip in the center. Okay, go for it. And I'm just gonna do this PC right now so that we don't, I don't muddy the water, so to yes, speak. Yes, yes. Before I do that, Brock, do we have any, any questions? questions? We have one question and a greeting Hi. Uh, Frances uh, Finlayson is wanted to say hi. She's in Glasgow, Scotland right now. How are oh you? Oh my gosh. I, is it? I looked it up. Yes. I knew that was going to be the follow up question from you guys. Yes. It is it, they are six hours ahead of us. So okay. it's about 20 after six. She's so having it's, supper. It's supper time. She's having supper watching us, Erica. Enjoy. Thank you for reaching love, out to we us. We love Scotland. We want to go I, back again. Yes. And then the question that we had comes from M. Wather. Wather. Okay. W a t h o r. Okay. Uh, she wants to know: Will layer cake work for this? Well, oh. oh. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure. So this is actually ten and a half inches. If you did with the fabric strip. So I don't. So for that, you couldn't cut this piece out of a layer cake mm. for sure. And I'm not sure. I think you might be able to, but I haven't tried. Yeah, I haven't tried either. I guess that's. You, you'd have to do some finagling. You'd now, have if to you do a little got, math in your head. You could do fat. You can use. I know for sure you can use fat quarters and you can use quarter yard cuts or as Pam is doing, larger cuts. Yep. All right, so I have little tails that are hanging off the edge here, and we are not gonna worry about them because there are only blades in the die, not in the cutter. Okay, so we're gonna turn the handle. All right, and while she's doing that, let me show you what I'm doing. I've got two of my colors, and I'm doing alternating blocks, so I'm doing uh, two blocks with each color with the fabrics in different positions. So I've got two, I cut four, I think I cut four and a half inch strips to go on this piece. And I'm gonna, they're folded in half, I'm just gonna lay them here. Make sure I've got my pieces all covered Lined up. it up. Lined it up. And I've got this mat, I'm gonna use it. I could use, since I'm just cutting a smaller section, I could just use a six inch mat and cut that. 
but I'm gonna go and cut this right now. Cause she's gonna show you the super duper trick. Right. Okay, so I have cut my little shapes and I'm just gonna cut off the ends so they don't make a mess. See, if you subcut, you have very little waste. Okay. All right, Rockwell, Eric is cutting and I'm getting my pieces. Do we have questions? We are caught up. Excellent. Don't forget, we have, if you have questions, let us know in the comments section. Okay, this is super cool trick. Everybody watching? Okay, so I've now cut four, two of each color. Oh, I've got one little thread here. Oh yeah, don't pull the thread. No. And you can see, I've got very little fabric waste. Now what I'm gonna do is take this and shift it right over here just up. Just just shift it down the die so that the whole shape is covered again. I'm going to cover it with my mat. I've got this little bit of fabric over here. I can cut this off if it's if it's if it you, bothers if you. It bothers you. And I'm going to take it back over here and I'm going to cut again. So I'm going to do the exact same thing that Erica is doing and um, I'm just going to do that cut and shift method. You could fan fold back and forth quilters. You could. You're gonna find that there's much more waste. Right. So. We just got a question in that kind of goes along with that. Uh, Andrea K wants to know, when I, she says, when I leave my tails using my Go Me, it will shift the fabric. Is there any way of preventing that? Yeah, I would not leave tails on a Go Me. It's harder with the Go Me because you don't have just the wiggle room on the side. a little bit. So yeah, if you, that's a great question. So if you're using that Go Me, um, just snip off your tails. Uh, just cause it's such a tight little space in there. But you can measure and, and like right here, you know, if I were using the yes. Go Me, I would just uh, take it off right there. Okay, so I shifted over. There's my second set. So that's enough for two blocks and I'm done. Ta-da! And I've got a little bit of scraggle here that I can cut off. And then I can just ship, take what's left in my strip if I want to and place it up here, place it up here. I can go ahead and cut. I need one of each of those. I need two down here. Let me just go ahead and cut two and, of each down here. And Erica, sometimes um, like when I'm doing the uh, cut and shift method. Mm -hmm. I will just do them all at once. Right, right. right. I did two. So right, right. I, yeah. You can do whatever all the shape sees. Divide mine up here. Yep. Right. Got another question here from V. Hi D. V. Oh V. Mm. Hi V. Mm. Uh, she wants to know how about using plaid? Will piece C be a problem with that? Using plaid, we'll see. Well, look at how you lined it up. And my tip for working with plaids and stripes is to make sure you, when you subcut your fabric, go ahead and use the lines on the fabric for that subcutting instead of just straight measuring because sometimes fabric those are printed at an angle a little bit oh yes you want to go with how it's printed if you hold on for just a minute i will go over here and get some plaid fabric oh okay erica will do that pam you can answer this next question i can uh, from carol Hi, she carol. says that shapes a and b look to be very similar in size are they the same size no nope but they do look like they are about the same size yep B is a little bit smaller. B is chunkier. And we did have a request uh, if you could go over the quilt on the wall. Yes, uh, I can walk there. Show over the, what that project is. Yep, let's do that. All right, I'm just trimming my little. Wait, I'm off. coming back. Okay, while you get ready, let's talk about this. Okay. So here is the project. It's called uh, Go Dart Around the Nine Patch. 
It uh, finishes to a nine inch finished block. It's called a bob or a block on board die, which means all the shapes you need to make one nine inch block are on the die board, okay? And when we sew these gentle curves, look at this cool secondary pattern that happens with the circles. So as this one only needs nine, so nine and nine and nine is 27. Look at me doing some math. Uh, with the border, I think it finishes to like 38 by 38. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm actually going to do six across. So six plus times nine is 56, right? 54. Look at me knowing that, 54. And then I'm gonna do uh, 10. Or I'm sorry, not six and eight. Okay. So mine is going to be bigger and longer because I want to be able to snug under it. Yes. Right? If I'm going to do that. So here's shape A, here's shape B, shape C, and then the arch. And Please. while you're back there, okay, now I'm going to come back here okay. and say something about it. Because it. one of the reasons why I love this die so much is that you can take and put another nine inch finish square, say in the center, and it will still give it this circular frame. Yes. And so that opens up so many possibilities for designing fun things with this, because again, there's a seam here. So you could put a nine inch churn dash in here. Right. And it would have a circular frame around it or right. whatever else you want it to. Yeah, I think it's super cool. Okay, so we've got some plaid fabric. So let's see what happens. All right, Ellie. Erica's gonna do plaid and I'm just gonna cut fabric and. So the first thing I was talking about was exactly what you can see Pam's already done with this, which was cut this along the plaid, the line of the fabric. Yep. So because that's already done, Let's see, let me measure this. I don't want to okay, use all your fabric. super impressed you found plaid fabric over well, there. Well, you had it over there for last week's show. Oh, oh yes, good point. You made that really cool June Taylor Quilt As You Go project with it last week. Uh, I did. And I really love this fabric. I actually have a fair amount of this fabric at home, and if I run out, I know where to come to get you more You know where now. to find more. Because <laughs> I haven't decided what to do with it yet. Okay, so <coughs> um, that's why we inches. have a stash. Right? Well, I know. Okay. So. All right, Brock, do we have questions while Erica's lining up her fabric? I'm cutting here? a four and a half inch square. Here. We do, we have one uh, quick comment that uh, according to our moderators, the finished pattern size, according to the pattern, the finished size for the quilt is 35 by 35. Look at me. I was close. You were. Uh, then we had a question here from Patsy S. Hi, Patsy. She wants to know, can you run the shorter dies through the cutter sideways? Uh, and the go big, just make sure you have the lengthwise grain going the right way. Yes. So, so the answer is yes, make sure the lengthwise grain is going the right way. All right, can you hand me, do you have a six by six mat over Look, there? I just cut with one. Thank you. Okay, so here we go, it's plaid time. I'm gonna lay this on here. I wanna be sure it's following the same exact angle as the shape. Listen, very seldom do you get to watch a show and have a question and somebody cut plaid for you. Yeah. I do love a good plaid though. Okay. So here's my, that's that one thread. Okay. Here's my shape. I personally think this would be delightful. <laughs> okay. Look at that. Oh, look at that. It's perfectly squared up. Yep. Go for it. So you just have to take a little bit of care with it. But yeah, yeah it's absolutely gonna work for you. And the trick is making sure that you've lined up the right. edge. Right. Yeah, that's a great answer. Okay, so that's, cause then the same thing, it's gonna go up here. It's gonna be the mm -hmm. same direction. Yep. Up, go for it. Go for it and- And then show us project. a picture. Yeah. That's right. Take a picture and post it on our Facebook page. Use 
hashtag AccuQuiltBuild? AQSOS. AQSOS and AccuQuiltBuild. And the site you want to be sure you join is the Facebook group that's the AQS Quilting Project Parade. That's where we've got this fabulous community of quilters that have been doing these quilt alongs and yeah. jump in anytime. It's such a fun group and we it love is. working with them. Pam and I jump on all the time and check yeah. in on you and I, look I've at I've been your gone a couple pictures. of days. I haven't checked on it, but I feel like some of you are already almost done. I know. I got back from vacation and I had to jump on and check. Now, for those of you who've watched our previous quilt along show, so yes. now we've kind of showed you the cutting part. Now we're going to talk about the storage part my favorite way to organize pieces in zip top bags, okay? Today is no different. <laughs> so I have three bags, and instead of separating the pieces out by shape, which is like what I do for like a log cabin, right? right I am putting all the pieces for one block together in one bag, then I can lay out the blocks and start chain piecing for days. And this is super nice because I got gallon sized ones so not only can I put the pieces in. But you don't have to fold yours. You don't have to fold no. them. See, I, did, I had the smaller ones left over and I was using them. Well, but we'll I'm doing the garden. same way. I am taking the block by block. Yes. So I've got four of my outer pieces, four of the side center pieces, uh -huh. one center, and then four of these curved kite pieces. Yes. And yeah. for those of you um, wondering, no, these shapes don't exist anywhere else. No. Except for on this die. So these right. shapes are not in a cube for you. Yeah, or even on another bob die. Even on another bob die. Yeah. How are we doing, Brock? Got a couple more questions. All right, uh, let's hear them. Real quick, so uh, Wizzy H, uh, had the question, I was wondering about the fact that your mat is covering the entire die, but you're only cutting one shape. Uh, oh. How much wear and tear does that do on the die? Okay, so great question. So look, I'm cutting one shape. I used a smaller six by six die. Yes. When and I'm cutting all the shapes, then I'm gonna use my long mat. Now I used a long one because that's what I had here. Yeah. But then when I went back, you'll see I used just the six by six for that one shape. But the great question is the die is gonna get thousands of cuts. What's gonna wear out are these cutting mats. So we wanna flip them and turn them and flip them and turn them. And when they stop cutting cleanly, that's when you need to replace your mat. It's not the die that needs sharpening or anything else it is the mat right okay good all right point. Brock what else that was a good question uh, Randy a has the question do you have to have odd number of blocks to keep the circular design I would say four and four and four would keep the design. What do you think, Well, Brock? you're gonna have a partial circle along the sides any way that you look at it. Yeah. And you're still gonna get the circular. Yeah. But that was a good question. Yes. Okay, what else? Well, just had one pop up here. Uh, when you cut uh, shape C yes. with an uneven plaid, do we need to do left and right shapes by fan folding? to be sure we get pairs of shapes that will be mirror image? I would say that would be personal preference. Is it going to bother you if you do it just standard? But you can fan fold. You could fan fold. You could Here. also Here. flip. Here, let's cut some and we can see. Well, this is, but this is an even one. She's saying oh, an uneven. Uneven. She's uneven. saying uneven. So, yeah. um, I, I think that that's, I'm gonna call that a personal preference. That's an audible, we're gonna call an audible. We're gonna call an audible and leave that up to you. Yeah, okay. All right, quilters, so when choosing your colorway, make it your own. Yes. Maybe try different fabrics than you normally use, like batiks or grunge, or maybe you're getting ready for a holiday. We just got some holiday fabric. We did. From our good friends at Friley Blake. Yes. Um, 
But I would tell you to start with your stash. Mm -hmm. Truly, quilters, this is like a quick, easy weekend project. Mm -hmm. And it would be super fun for scrap busting. Yes. yes. I mean, I feel like choosing the colors was the hardest thing. Oh, I think so too. Right, because once you've so cut too. your pieces, then you're just all ready to go. I'm right? gonna finish cutting these. All right, while Erica cuts, I'm gonna talk. Don't forget, this is a quilt along, not a race. <laughs> so we know many of you will have all of your blocks cut and sewn together before next week's show. Uh, so be sure and share those on our Facebook, uh, the show, share your fabric and blocks on the AQS Quilting Project Parade Facebook page. Erica and I will go in and see what you've done. Erica and I will not be doing any blocks before next week because this afternoon we are getting on a plane and we're headed to Philadelphia. We're yes. going to Hayes Sewing on Thursday afternoon. Friday we're going to Springwater Design and Material Girls. And then Saturday morning we're going to Steve Sewing. We're doing a trade up and learn. So if you own a go cutter or you're looking to get a go cutter or you want to upgrade, um, Eric and I are going to be there talking about stash busting and scrap busting and talking about That's our dice. Right. We're gonna... uh, check out those stores, uh, website and Facebook pages to register. Absolutely. We yeah. would love to see everybody there. Yep. yep. But you also want to check out the AccuQuilt blog because the lovely Erica will have a post oh, yes. each Wednesday during the quilts along going over the details from the day's events. Be sure to sign up so you'll be notified whenever that blog goes live. That's right. Okay, I've got okay, one. Just keep going. I've Do you need one. a long mat? Well, not right now. I'm just going to cut this one. And then I'm going to have my opposites. Okay. I do need to cut some Ds, but there you go. since the fabric that I thought was mine was yours. Because mine was already subcut. And don't forget, AQS will also be updating their original blog post. So you can check that out as well. So if you use that hashtag, AQSOWS, S-E-W-S, all one word on that hashtag, then what we do, we go into the Facebook group and then we can search for that and then we can see everybody's projects. That's right. Okay, Brock, do we have questions or comments? Yes, a few things uh, came in. So uh, uh, Wizzy, who asked the question about the mats and the dyes just a second ago, uh, she wanted to re-ask, uh, I think she wants to know if you use the mats on the, a full length mat on the full length die, but you only have fabric on one shape, oh. does the mat get affected by the other nope. spots? Oh, yeah. no. It's only going to cut where there's fabric in a mat, so if there's no fabric in between here, it's not going to cut on the mat. That's I mean, it's going to cut through, it's going to make an it impression. It will make the impression, so you will be adding wear to your mat, but it's not going to hurt anything. Yeah, it's not going to make I a mean, difference. Okay. But uh, flip it and turn it, flip it and turn it, get all the good love out of it. And then we had a question uh, about the mats when they start to be, get run down. If you have a larger mat and it starts to split in one area, can you cut it down to have a smaller size? Yeah, mat? okay, so let me just tell you, that's the question I get the most about mats. And the answer is go to the website and get a new mat. What's gonna happen <laughs> is I have seen people take like their rotary cutters or their you know, big scissors mm -hmm. and take a big 10 by 24 mat and cut them down. Mm -hmm. The problem is once you cut it down, then the edges start to wear faster. And Well, and, and they'll, they often will split apart yeah. too. So I'm gonna tell you, just get you a new mat. I, I have seen quilters take our little six by 12 mats and put them like in the bottom of tote bags or shopping bags or those kind of things. You have to check with your state to see if they recycle. Right, right. So basically the answer is no, you don't want to cut them down. Yeah, you don't want to cut them down. Just get you a new mat. Yeah. So that goes along. We had a great tip come in from Patty Z who says that she uses little stickers on each corner of her cutting mat and that every time she cuts with it, she knows to put a different number on the bottom right hand side of the cutter that she's cutting through to know that she's always reuse, not reusing the same side and same angle of the mat. Okay, that's brilliant. That is brilliant because I lose track. Don't you lose track? I do. Also, so here- Oh, they're so smart and organized. Yeah. Can we, oh here, we'll do an overhead. So like quilters, if I were using this mat, normally you just place it all over the die, but look, you can shift it from side to side. 
right? If you're using the go, you, it's not, you won't be able to do it in the go me, but if you have the go or the go big. And so I often do that, especially like with my two and a half inch strip die. Mm -hmm. I often offset that mat because you'll find those grooves in there a lot. How you doing well, over there, my friend? I'm just going to flip my mat because we were just talking about it. <laughs> she is. Dang. All right. So while Erica continues to cut, we should give away something, don't you think, Oh, Erica? I should. We should. Okay. Here. Uh, before we I'll end part one of our quilts along for the go dart around the uh, glorified nine patch throw quilt, we want to announce the winner of today's giveaway. All right. The lucky winner of $100 in AccuQuilt reward points is... Hold, please. Hold, please. That was... Brenda W. from Peterborough, UK. Oh, congratulations. congratulations. Brenda. Okay, Brenda, hey, I've been to the Peterborough. I have been there many, many Switch. times. Oh, my I gosh. Love it. And Brenda, because we're going and we're traveling and I'm trying to be efficient, I've already put that $100 on your account. Well, there you go. All right. Quilters, don't forget we have plenty of special offers available for you on our website, including that Go Me, which is less than $100. It comes with two dies, a half square triangle and a quarter square triangle, mm -hmm. three inch finished uh, squares. And we have over 200 patterns. So if you're new that you to you can us, make with those two dies. That you can make with those two dies, yeah. If you're new to AccuQuilt, if you're just tuning in for the first time, it is a great way to start. And don't forget, you can add the glorified nine patch and a six by 20 format for less than $300. That's right. I think it's great. All right. Now to get your order in, you wanna open a new tab in your browser. You'll type in AccuQuilt.com to see the party and our current deals and to place your order and I forgot to pull that square. It's okay. Look at this. This is, what month is it? This October. <laughs> October. This is October's Die to Try Die. And this we is the jewel it. petal for English paper piecing. So that means that there are two sets of these shapes on the die. It's going to cut the template that you put in the middle and also the fabric that you're gonna baste around that template. And we had tons of inspiration yesterday on yes. our show. And we have tons of ways to show you how to cut with this die. So don't forget, if you missed it, you can go back and watch it. They, all of our videos, including this one and yesterday's, live on our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and our website. That's right. All right, Brock, do we have any questions before we end for today? I think we are pretty good, we're solid answer them all. Excellent. I love that. Excellent. Okay, so get your pieces cut. Yes. And be sure and show your fabric choices on our yes. website or on our Facebook page. All right. It is time for us to get ready for our next show. Uh, actually, it's time for us to go get on a plane. That's we right. hope that today's show is just what you needed to inspire you to get started on the go dart around the glorified nine patch throw quilt. Don't forget to join that Facebook group, share your questions with us, and rotate your mats. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. To learn more about your quilting craft, be sure to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for live events every Tuesday and Wednesday. You can check out the events page on the AccuQuilt website for more details on upcoming shows. And if you're looking for even more inspiration, visit our blog for exclusive tutorials filled with tips and tricks. And remember at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so you can quilt more. Join us every Tuesday at 12 noon central time for launch parties and trunk shows. These events are filled with tips, tricks, and inspiration. Next time, we'll be launching not one, but two new dies. You'll want to tune in, see if you've won a door prize that we'll give away during the show, and meet those new dies. Be sure to join me every Wednesday at 12 noon Central Time for AccuQuilt Live. We have tons of fun. Next time, Eric and I will be sewing our blocks together for the Go Glorified Nine Patch Project. Hope to see you there.